everyone, and welcome back to another edition of an IFL preview on the Inner Sanctum YouTube channel. We're, do we're doing the Western Bulldogs today, and I've got two esteemed guests with me to discuss the 2023 season for the Western Bulldogs. I'm talking the lovely Ellie McInerney. Ellie, welcome. Hi, thanks for having me. And Johnny Goring, welcome to the YouTube channel, mate. Thanks so much for having us. Looking, looking forward to having a chat. All things doggies. Love you, beauty. All things doggies today, we're going to be talking about the Western Bulldogs, who did finish eighth in 2022. We were knocked out in the first elimination final. And Elliot, I can already see the pain on your face. Um, I know it would have been a pretty difficult end to 2022. So we'll start with you before we get into the nitty gritty stuff. How are you feeling coming into 2023, Ellie? For some reason, like normally I go into a season very like underconfident. I think that's gro growing up with a bunch of Collingwood supporters. But um, for some reason, I'm slightly confident this season. I don't know why, but yeah. And Johnny, how are you looking uh, at the dogs this year? They've come in, made a few changes. Uh, they're yeah, looking pretty, some, uh, pretty unique. So how yeah, are you going? I think some uh, really good changes too. I think in the past, the doggies have had... A Few issues with key position depth, and I think this year they've really covered that well with Rory Love and Liam Jones. I think uh, Liam Jones is going to be a, a fantastic addition. I mean, the dogs last year struggled in their back line, um, and I think he's really going to shore up um, a key spot down there too. And, and Rory Love too, he had a great season for Fremantle last year, and I think he's going to have a pretty good um, role up forward with Aaron Norton and also chop out um, in the right with Tim English. Yeah, they have. And speaking of ins and outs, we heard, obviously the dogs went uh, pretty hard, pretty late in the trade period. Didn't have much to do early on. Um, picking up Rory Lord, Liam Jones, as you said, as a free agent as well, and into the draft too. So um, how did you find the ins and outs? Obviously losing Zane Cordy, Josh Dunkley was a big one uh, to come out. Stefan Martin retired. Lockie Hunter went off to uh, Melbourne. So, Ellie, how did you feel about losing some of those players? Obviously, it's not ideal losing your best and fairest winner. But, um, I mean, I think with the players we have, I think with the position Dunkley played last season, it might be a bit easier to um, cover him with other players stepping up because I know that sort of the player, although he was amazing last season, is sort of one that we have a few players that can fill that role. So I'm not too worried about Dunkley. Um per se, but yeah, it's going to be very interesting. And I think with the dogs too, it just needs more midfield minutes for Marcus Bontepelli, Adam Shalor, um, Bailey Smith too. So I think, yeah, they can cover dunks, but he did have a great season. He was probably their best defensive midfielder as well. So I guess that could be a big, big role, but I think, yeah, there's enough depth for that midfield to cover him. Yeah, for sure. And I think as well, you know, showcasing how much uh, a lot of other clubs did want Josh Dunkley as well probably proves how much value he does have uh, in terms of his own wealth. So I think it's interesting that he's gone, but also I do agree with Ellie that um, you know, there's a lot of replacement there. There's a lot of depth, and I think there's a few youngsters as well. You look at the draft too, um, Oscar Baker coming through as a, um, a preseason supplementary pick. Uh, Jed Buslinger has come through as well at pick 13. Um, Charlie Clark, the CC in dry, so he's come through at pick 24. Harvey Gallagher at pick 39. So some good picks inside the top 40. Uh, Johnny, how did you find the dogs doing the draft? Yeah, I think they did quite well. I think Jed Musling is going to be a really long-term key position player for them. And I guess the fact that they've got some key position depth at the club too, so he can develop slowly. And I think, um, yeah, in the next you know two or three years, I think he'll really build up his physique and, and, and have a roll down back too. And I think Charlie Clark's one who's already excited some, some doggy fans too. He's that little pressure forward. You can get under this uh, opposition skin. Um, so I think he's going to have a, a pretty handy role too. And Oscar Baker, I think he's going to be a handy player on the wing. It's sort of like Lockie Hunter's out the door now and Oscar Baker in. And I mean, unfortunately, he couldn't really get much of a go at Melbourne with their midfield. And I think he's going to be a one to watch as well for the Dogs. Ellie, how'd you find uh, the draft picks for the Dogs? Obviously, being a, a massive Dogs fan, were you excited coming out of uh, that draft night? Yeah, um, I was. Um... Looking, I think, going in, I think Jed Buslinger was one that I think it was either going down to him or Ed Allen who ended up at the Pies. But, um, yeah, to get Jed, I think um, we're, the dogs are really starting to able to develop sort of a long-term key position, sort of depth with um, the likes of Jamara, um, Sam Darcy, who can play at either end, and then Aaron Norton and now Jed. So, yeah, it's 
going to be very exciting for in the next few years for the dogs. It definitely, and I think looking into 2023 with all the ins and outs that have come through, there is a lot of focus points um, for the dogs this year. Johnny, is there a particular one that the dogs will be looking at to um, improve and, and get right? Yeah, I think their defence um, needs to improve a lot last year. Um, it sort of leaked a lot of goals and, and really couldn't stop teams going on, on big momentums too. And unfortunately last year, Alex Heath you know, was in and out of the team with form and fitness issues. Dan Cordy you know, couldn't really cement a spot too. So the defence was really under the pump. And, and Ryan Garner, I thought, really stood up last year quite well in that key position post. And I think now with the addition of Liam Jones and um, you know, Keith is still around, Josh Bruce might play down back, Sam Darcy. I think the defence looks stronger on paper this year too. I think that's definitely one area they need to improve on. Uh, Ellie, I think the return of Josh Bruce is going to be absolutely crucial in my personal opinion. Um, do you find that he's going to have a massive impact this year or is there someone else that might focus? Um, we might focus on instead? Well, in terms of ones to watch, yeah, um, I think Josh Bruce would be. But then going back to the likes that could replace um, Josh Dunkley, I think Riley West had a great um, 2022. And um, sort of with that, spot opening up in the forward midfield he can go to the new level next year and um toby mclean as well had a great um yeah. elimination elimination final in the first half before the dog sort of just fell asleep um and yeah he was coming off an acl injury so a full pre-season um hopefully yeah he'll be another one to watch for the dogs you can definitely see the pain in your face mentioning the word elimination final, which <laughs> I know exactly how you feel. Don't worry about that. Um, the dogs have been pretty quiet in terms of off-season this year. They haven't really um, made any big news um, going around at the moment. If you're a dogs fan watching this, I'll, I'll speak to specific, specifically Johnny first. Um, if you're a dogs fan coming into this year, would you be genuinely excited? Yeah, I think there's a lot of optimism at the dogs too. And also, you know, Luke Brevich has extended his contract for another couple of seasons too and a bit more st stability uh, with him. And also Brendan Lay has come on board too as a senior assistant. And mm. I just think there's a fair bit of optimism uh, at the dogs too. As I said, like, you know, having a forward line of potentially a Roy Love, Aaron Norton, Jamara, Hugo Hagen um, is going to be a really damaging forward line along with Cody Waitman too. And I think if the dogs stay um, healthy, um, I think top four is definitely you know, should be achievable because they've got so much depth in the back line and, and forward line. Their midfield is always strong too. So, yeah, I think there's definitely lots of uh, excitement for this season. Uh, Ellie, I think Jamara Eugle Hagen uh, was a key name there. I just picked up back end of last year. I thought he was really, really finding his own groove. He really stood out from the rest in terms of being up forward, having a presence. Do you think now that he's had that bit of growth and bit of confidence that 2023, he can just outshine everyone else? Yeah, definitely. I think as well that game against Melbourne, having the three tools really um, with Bruce Norton and Jamara was able to stretch out the Melbourne defence. So um, just by she way the numbers, Jamara probably had the lesser defender there and he was able to um, expose the defence. So if we have... If the dogs, sorry, have a forward line of Lob, Norton and Jamara, we could see situations like that present again in 2023, which is very exciting. Round one's not too far away. Round one is Saturday night for the dogs against Melbourne. Couldn't be any more of a, a blockbuster Saturday night fixture. We talk about uh, Hugo Hagen's performance. Johnny, do you find that the dogs have a fixture that they can work with to build to that potential top four spot? Yeah, yeah, I believe they do. Um, I mean, they do have a few tough games to start the season. Melbourne, of course, is is the big one in round one too. And I'm looking forward to seeing how you know, Tim English goes against Brody Grundy and Max Gorn. That's going to be an absolute massive test. And I think that's why Rory Lobb's going to be a, a final inclusion too. Uh, but looking at the Dogs uh, fixture too, I mean, that's, it's not too bad, I think. Um, they've you know, got a lot of good uh, home games in, in Melbourne early in the year. And you know, round three is going to be a huge game against Josh Dunkley and, and the Lions. But I think last year the dogs just, you know, had a up and down start of the season. They couldn't really get momentum. And I think this year, you know, if they get a couple of wins early in the year, that, that confidence will be able to, I think their draw would give them confidence of a, at least a top six position, I think. Uh, Ellie, how important is a, uh, a fast start for the dogs in 2023? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I know last year it was very frustrating, um, the slow start the dogs had after um, such a great 2021. But um, 
Yeah, so I think building on hopefully a great performance against Melbourne, um, there were a few times towards the start of the season where they'd start well in the game and just fade out late, which that Melbourne game was one of them. So coming into the season, um, or the first sort of three, four or five rounds, we don't want we the dogs don't want to wait until um, sort of that round four to sort of get going. So fingers crossed, um, it will be more of a twenty twenty one start to the season than it was last year. Yeah, definitely feel the excitement and nervousness coming from you. That's sensational. I will get straight into the questionnaire, the 10 questions that will summarise this year for the dogs. I'll start with um, you, Ellie. We'll go back to you again. Question number one, how do you judge the club's pre-season so far? I think from what I've sort seen, it's been great, but um, the few injury concerns to Bailey Smith and Adam Chaloy, um aren't ideal. And Johnny, how would you found as well the club's preseason? Yeah, I agree with um, Ali too. A little bit concerning, I'm sure. I think he trained yesterday, but I mean, yeah, he's been a bit slowed down since that injury. Bailey Smith just came back to the track. But um, other than that, like, you know, as I said, Liam Jones has fitted really, really well back into the club. Like, he's trained the house down as well. And the players like Alex Keith as well, like, plays who had interrupted last year, he's he's training well. And apparently Marcus Bontempelli's flying up on the track too. So, um, yeah, I think if he stays healthy, watch out. Yeah, not surprised about that either. Uh, number two, we'll go into, I'll get one from each of you as well. A must pick for your fantasy supercoach team. Ellie, I'll start with you. Um, I mentioned him before, but um, to- Toby McLean with um, very limited game time last year. He's going to be quite cheap. And when he was in the side, he was averaging low 80s to um, high 90s. So cer- certainly one to look out for. Johnny? Yeah, I have to say uh, Marcus bonson Pally. I think he's going to play more midfield time now that Dunkley's gone. And he's already been a fantasy you know, star in the past too, and I just think that, you know, injury free, he'll, he'll have a huge year. Tim English would be on the radar as well if I was picking. Um, number three, one change that needs to be made. Ellie, we'll start with you. Oh, it's an interesting one. Um, I don't have one change per se, but I think the mix in the forward line sort of needs to get get right if we're if the dogs are in with a chance to have another successful season. Johnny, what are you most excited for for the dogs in 2023? Yeah, I'm just excited to see uh, Jamal Yuko Hagen, Sam Darcy, especially those two. I think you know, Sam Darcy's scary and good. How he's going to be either a forward or, or defender. Um, I think he's going to have a massive impact on this year too. And, and just seeing how the forward line goes. I mean, Rory Bob and Norton, like how good is Norton? Norton was good last year, he came 50 goals and not a lot of support. And now he's got Bob and he's still got Yuko Hagen and Bruce can play in between too. So I'm really looking forward to seeing how Aaron Norton flies this year. Uh, Ellie, who's at the big year for? Uh, Josh Bruce with um, Lob coming in. Um, it's very that third spot in the forward line has seemed to um, potentially go to Rory, so he'll have to possibly make an impact in defence this season. Hey, well, the dogs have a lot of tall people, and you think if uh, there's a shortage, I know where I'm going just in case to pick one up. Um, who is that a big year for, Johnny? Yeah, I think it's a huge year for Alex Keith. He's out of contract and a lot of competition for spots in defence too, and I think definitely if he gets back to his 2021 form, he'll be a massive inclusion too. So I think it's a huge year for him. And also Tim O'Brien, he came across from fourth form as a, as a free agent to potentially replace Eastern Wood too. And he just didn't get going last year too. So it's another huge year for him too. Uh, what is it going to be a breakout year for? So who's having the standout year this year, Ellie? I mentioned them before. I have two. I've got Riley Weston, Toby McLean. Beautiful. And uh, who's having a breakout year, Johnny? Yeah, I think I've got a few. Riley Garcia, he's been around for a few years as well. And he's had a uh, knee injury and he's played a couple of games in the last two years as a small pressure forward. And I think now there's more midfield opportunity for himself and Riley West. So I think he's up for a big year too. And also um, Don Benendo, he's sort of a wing half forward to play a variety of roles. And also uh, Buku Carvest, I think, um, shows a lot of talent both ends of the ground too. So I think he's going to have a big year. That's uh, all lovely, all big names. Let's see how they pan out this year. But this is my favourite question of this uh, this questionnaire. Is a headline you'll see, Ellie? What I've is got, I'm saying? I've got Rory Lobb proves doubt is wrong in 2023. Obviously, a few, I know a few dog supporters were worried to get him over, but I think he'll prove everyone wrong and be um, a great addition to the dog's forward line. Johnny, what's the headline I'm reading from you this year? 
Yeah, I think uh, Sam Darcy uh, wins the Rising Star by massive margin. I think he's just going to have an absolutely outstanding season. We all know he's got talent, but I think he's going to prove himself and I think he's going to have a huge year. Ellie, what's one match I must watch on the calendar for the dogs this year? Uh, round three, dogs v Lions. I think everything that went on during that trade period, um, very interesting to see what happens. Although it is a Thursday night, so that's probably a bit hard to get to the game itself. But, um, yeah, what, certainly one to watch. Lovely. I love Thursday night games. Johnny, what's uh, one game I must watch for the dogs this yeah, year? Yeah, well, I agree with that round three game with dogs and lions, but I think round one's huge. I mean, Melbourne and Western Bulldogs had a massive rivalry the last couple of seasons, obviously, with the grand final and a few off-field things. And Lockie Hunter against his old team round one and the Max uh, Gorn brady Grundy combination with Tim English and Roy Love. I think that's going to be a huge round one game. Looking forward to that one. I wouldn't mind throwing in gather round as well at the Adelaide Oval against Port Adelaide. Looking forward to that <laughs> one myself. Uh, minimum expectation for your club this year, Ellie? Uh, finals. For sure. Love that. Simple one word answer. If I'm not <laughs> seeing finals, that's, that's ruined my year. Uh, yeah. Johnny, what's an expectation for um, yeah. the Dogs this year? Definitely top six, I think, in, in Luke Beveridge's tenure. They haven't finished top four after they're having away season. So I think that should be the, the expectation and aim this year. But definitely top six would have to be a minimum. And where will your club finish on the ladder in 2023, Ellie? Uh, I've got between 6th to 10th. Of that. Uh, Johnny? Yeah, I think anywhere between 24 and, and 6th, I reckon. I reckon a yeah, good year coming up for the Dogs. Pretty confident in their uh, chances. Wow, eh? <laughs> I, I didn't really think about the Dogs this preseason, but now after this, I'm feeling really invigorated and uh, hoping to see that you both are right, and specifically for Ellie, because she's, I can see the pain still. I can still see the pain. That elimination final, I wasn't too worried because my um, footy team, my local footy team, had just won the flag, so I wasn't really paying too much attention to that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there would have been the next day pain. <laughs> Oh, well, guys, I really do appreciate you joining me for the Western Bulldogs preview. So thank you so much. Thanks so Thanks much. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Well, go over, guys, everyone go check out the rest of the AFL previews uh, that have happened for 2023 on the Insight to YouTube channel. Make sure you subscribe for three more content to come your way. And we'll see you next time.